Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. It's Krista, and this is week two of Mineral Madness uh, Mineral ID videos. Today we're going to talk about cleavage, and this is going to be a quick video. Um, I've got a lot going on this week, but I just want to do a quick mineral identification video as promised. And uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about cleavage and a little bit about fracture, because they go hand in hand. Um, but first, what is cleavage? So basically, cleavage is the separation um, by breaking a mineral along its planes, and these planes are caused by weaknesses in the mineral. So mica is a really good example of that, and you can just see these like lines. Those are all those those cleavage planes. So with mica, we have cleavage just along one axis, and that's this top axis. And I can. I already kind of broke it earlier, but uh, I can pretty much just break this along these these cleavage planes, and I can just like peel off these crystals. Um, let me do it to this little one. It does not want to focus, but uh, yeah. See how it just it peels off into these little sheets. Each of those sheets is a mica crystal, and uh, it's just a weakness in those chemical bonds between them that makes them break apart so easily. So uh, mica in specific gets uh, called books, mica books, just because you get those thin sheets like that. So your muscovite and your biotite mica, this one's muscovite, both have that one plane of cleavage. But you can also have two or three planes of cleavage. Um, so this is a feldspar here, and in the feldspar, you're looking for these kind of shiny areas. So that's our one plane there, and this is our other. So these are two cleavage planes at 90 degrees, and that's how you're going to identify most feldspars. So that includes your labradorites, your amazonites, moonstone, um, any feldspar minerals, right, your plain old plagioclase and orthoclase and all the uh, the ones you learn about in school if you uh, take a rock ID class. But uh, you can also have three planes of cleavage. So this is a calcite. This one's also calcite, and this shows them perfectly. And these three are not at 90 degrees, so you get this rhombus look to it. Um, rhombohedral, rhombohedral cleavage. But uh, here's just a, a rougher one. And you can see that, that shiny surface. So if you were to break this and you broke it along that surface, it would still be shiny one layer down because it has that cleavage plane there and a cleavage plane along here. You can kind of see the color. I don't want to call it color play because you can get that with the labradorite, but it's harder to see in in uh, your, your whiter minerals. But you get that that kind of pearly sheen um, of the light hitting those those planes. So uh, we've got a rhombohedral cleavage on our calcite here. And our galena, we also have three planes of cleavage, but these are all at 90 degrees. So if you were to break this, you're probably going to break it into smaller uh, pieces that are going to have kind of a cuby look to them. So we've got our one plane up here, one plane there, and one plane there. So that's our, our three planes of cleavage, and they're all making a nice 90 degree corner there. Now with cleavage, there's a couple of things you would use to describe your cleavage. Your uh, uh, quality is going to be how smoothly it breaks. So you might have perfect cleavage or imperfect cleavage. Um, I would say mark... Uh, muscovite, you're going to have probably pretty close to perfect cleavage. You're going to be able to break it really easily. Whereas something like your galena or your feldspar especially, um, it's probably going to be a little bit more imperfect. Um, you're not going to have as good of, of cleavage planes. But uh, it'll either be distinct or good or fair or poor. Um, and it just, just comes down to the mineral chemical composition. You also could describe the difficulty, how easily or hard it is to produce that cleavage. So if it's really easy, again, like the mica, it'll be easy. But uh, 
something where you're going to have to break it with a hammer or, you know, uh, some sort of mechanical means of breaking it apart, uh, it's going to be a lot, lot harder or more difficult to break. So that's going to be a, a difficult cleavage, but it doesn't mean you're not still going to get perfect cleavage once you get it broken. Now, last week we talked a little bit about luster and I did point out this mineral here, our labradorite. And the labradorite has this color play based on the cleavage plane. So if we turn it on the back, you can uh, kind of see where the cleavage, the cleavage planes are. When you rotate it so that those cleavage planes are hitting the light, you're getting the, that labradorescence. Um, that's a really, really cool feature of this particular type of feldspar. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's a direct result of cleavage. So just like you get the kind of flash on this one here, you're getting that flash on this one here. It's just a lot cooler because of the colors in it. Now, in addition to cleavage, there's also fracture. And these two kind of go hand in hand, but they also get confused because they both involve breaking the rock. So cleavage, it involves a chemical, chemical bond being broken. Those crystals are breaking along, these weaknesses in that crystal plane. But fracture is just patterns that'll occur, and part of it is to do with the crystal structure when when it's broken. So it it goes hand in hand, but it's it's different because it's not breaking along weaknesses in the chemical plane. Um, with fracture, the most common one is going to be your conchoidal fracture, and that's what you find in quartz um, and all your chalcedonies. So if you if this will focus, there's kind of a little bit here. And it breaks in this like kind of curved pattern. Um, let's see if I have any other good examples on this piece. I grabbed a couple of pieces of flint, and flint is chalcedony, and uh, it will it will break along those conchoidal fractures as well, which is why it's often used to make arrowheads and other sharp projectile points, um, because you can nap it really easily and get it really sharp because of those conchoidal fractures. Um, so you can see kind of all these like curved bits there. Those are all your conchoidal fractures. Um, probably the best example I could find digging through my rocks right now is this piece of obsidian. And obsidian's a, a glass, not a mineral, but glass also has a conchoidal fracture and obsidian has it really well, which is another reason why, uh, obsidian like flint is also frequently napped and made into projectile points. But, um, uh, you can see right here. Let's see if I can zoom in on that one. Nope, wrong way. This piece right here shows a really nice conchoidal fracture. Those, it does not want to focus. Sorry about that. Really nice curvature in there. So that's a perfect conchoidal fracture. So that can be really helpful in identifying, especially quartz minerals, because feldspar does not uh, fracture like that. So feldspar and quartz often can get mixed up in the field, especially when they're inside another rock, like a granite, where you have both of them. The feldspar will have the cleavage planes, so quartz won't have that, that sheen to it. But uh, feldspar won't have that conchoidal fracture. So that's an easy way to tell those two apart. It's going to be uh, the cleavage and the fracture there. There's also a couple other types of fractures. Um, you've got a splintery one. So that's going to be your kyanite or other kind of fibrous materials. Um, you can also have an earthy fracture, an uneven fracture, or like a jagged fracture. So like a metal, if you were to break a piece of copper, it's going to be jagged. That's going to be a jagged fracture or a hackley, I guess is a term for it. So anyway, that's, that's what I have on fracture. I wanted to keep it kind of simple, so I didn't want to go too in-depth on it, but I might do another... Uh, cleavage and fracture video someday in the future I want to do a nice more in-depth series on mineral ID at some point. So that's what I have for you on cleavage and fracture. I hope that all made sense. I tried to keep it simple but if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below and of course we're still in the middle of mineral madness. Um, we just finished round one voting so round two is up and you can vote on those minerals. I'll have a link to that video um, and to the voting poll down below. And you can enter the giveaway for that, um, that video and through that poll. 
um, if you're interested and if you're watching this in March of 2022. Um, but of course, if you don't want to enter the giveaway, you can still vote and play along. But uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this made sense and uh, have a great day.